What's going on, y'all? Video number two, which is boy AJB.IMG, bringing you guys back another quick video. And today, I want to show you how to install uh, the Geptuned IT sensor relocation kit. So, shout out to Geptuned and a lot of his products. They are very quality products. If you do have a Genesis 5.0, an IKEA, really anything. If you need any tuning or anything like that, I would definitely recommend connecting with, with George over at Geptune. Uh, but today, the reason why I want to show you guys how to basically install this relocation kit is because it's very crucial. You know, this is going to be crucial for your car to be performing and running as well as it can. Um, the MAF sensor, which I'm going to show you guys, which is a little hard to get to, which is kind of why I made this video, uh, basically gets heat soaked since it's under the intake manifold. And once that gets heat soaked on your vehicle, it's going to start to retard your timing it's going to essentially drill down your performance in a negative way it's going to reduce it because it's going to be putting your car in safe mode due to the fact that it's going to be reading temperatures that are coming from that very very hot um you know intake manifold that's right basically you know under your engine so you need this relocation kit so that you guys can actually relocate that sensor to where your actual intake is to the front of the car where you're getting the most airflow um, and it's going to be reading the most accurate temperatures for your vehicle so that, you know, no matter when you're driving your car, what temperature it is, it's going to be giving you the most accurate temperatures on that day versus reading hotter than it needs to be or as hot as your engine is, which is not realistic. So this is not, again, the easiest, I would say, <laughs> space to kind of get into. If you have larger, larger hands, uh, I definitely don't recommend you trying to get to the MAF sensor. I've already unplugged it um, on this side, but I, I recommend if you have larger hands, trying to unplug it on the passenger side. It's going to be much easier for you to unplug this, this sensor and actually get to it. So as far as where the sensor is, here, let me get my trusty, there is my, my flashlight. One second. All right. So as far as where the sensor is, the sensor is right there. Hold on, let me get my camera so you guys can see. It's right here, literally right here, right in there. And I've got it unplugged here, so I'm gonna get my camera up in there so you can kind of see it a little bit better. But right now I've got it unplugged and you can clearly see that I've got it unplugged right here because I've got the little orange wire that is unplugged in this area. Now I'm gonna try to bear with me guys. But yes, it connects right into this little sensor area that you can see here. Now again, I have pretty big hands, so it's pretty hard to reach if you're on the driver's side. So I recommend you trying to reach it on the passenger side. It'll be much easier for you to actually access it. And once you get to it, it's pretty simple. Uh, all you really need to do is, there's a, there's a little tab right here, you need to push this tab down, push this tab down, don't yank it out, don't yank any of these wires out at all, because you don't want to do that at all, you don't, you'll definitely break the sensor and have some electrical issues. So you want to just gently press on this tab as, as needed, as so, and once you press on a tab, you're able to just lift it out. It's going to take a little bit of force now, you're not going to be able to, you know, just pull this out like it's butter you're gonna need to put a little bit of force on it and pull it out and then once you pull it out I will show you guys what the next step is in three two one and we're back so we're gonna basically take this orange connector and plug this where you unplugged the stock sensor from here make sure I got that right guys yep you should hear a little click just like you did right there so once you plug that orange side into the into the actual MAF right there then you can take the actual sensor that you unplugged which is to the harness and plug that right into here to this purple side. You can't really see it. You can't really see it that well, but you're gonna take this orange connector, this is what you originally disconnected, and plug this in here. And that should click as well, just like that. 
Now, once you've got that all complete, so you've got the relocation kit connected in here, you've got the stock sensor connected right in there into the original harness. You're gonna wanna go ahead and basically take this line. This is what you're left with pretty much. You're gonna wanna go ahead and take this line and run this along your engine, along your engine, your intake manifold. And you can drill pretty much, once you get over here, you can basically just drill a hole, whether you have, I'm, I, now I need to figure out where I wanna actually put it, so I'm not going to fully install this part right now. I'm probably gonna to have to drill this somewhere or figure out you know, what type of fitting I want to put it in. Maybe I'll put it in the, the intake, maybe I'll put it you know, somewhere along the plastic lining where I'm getting nice fresh air. But that's pretty much the, the whole gist. I'll probably use some zip, zip ties and zip tie along the uh, intake manifold so it's relatively neat and not you know looking kind of janky and just loose like this uh, but once i've zip tied that up i'll figure out where i want to plug this in so i'm getting accurate iat sensors i mean iat temperatures excuse me and yeah then we'll pretty much be done we'll be getting the most accurate readings on the car the car won't be i'm in california so the car is not going to be you know reducing its performance due to the ECU thinking that it's 180 degrees outside just because my engine temperature is probably 160 180 or however hot it thinks it is uh, instead it'll be getting that fresh air that's coming straight from either my intake or you know anything along uh, this intake area where you're getting fresh air as you drive the vehicle so this will work for any Genesis 5.0 again I definitely recommend you guys going to check out George's video. He goes into a lot more depth as to you know why it's important. Uh, he shows you a pretty close up video, uh, but I figured I would show a video of you actually doing it on the car, kind of where the location is, just in case anybody buys it and they're kind of you know wondering where it actually is. It's right there. Because if you start and you start looking on this side, you're gonna be confused. I actually started I, I thought it was this for a second. I was really confused. I was like, what is going on? You can't see it. So it's not going to be easy for you to actually install this relocation kit from the driver's side. It's, it's, I think it's best. And I have gargantuous hands to, to, to try to install this on the actual passenger side. So that's the whole video. Enough yapping. I hope you guys enjoy the content. Remember to like, share, subscribe for more videos. And remember to keep up on your maintenance on your Genesis in any vehicle you have so that it can be running crisp. I'm out. Deuces.